remember when we first started this chapter, I defined the electric field as V2 minus V1 is equal to uh, negative of the integral. I should put negative there. Uh, from 1 to 2. So, why am I reintroducing this? Well, here's the answer. There's a few cases where if you want to find the potential at a certain point, instead of using dv as k dq over r and integrating that, you would use this def uh, definition of the potential, and you would use the electric field that we calculated in the previous chapters. For example, let's say you have a sphere, or you have cylinders, or you have a uh, sheet or a plate plate so let's say uh, here's a cylinder and I want to find the potential at a certain distance from the cylinder or I, or I could say it this way at a certain distance from the center of the cylinder to a certain distance R or let's say I want to find the potential to a certain uh, distance r inside of the cylinder. Do you remember when we used the Gauss's law to find the electric field outside of a cylinder and the electric field inside of a cylinder? And let's say the cylinder was non-uniform charge density. We used Gauss's law to find the electric field inside of a cylinder. Same thing with the sphere. Do you remember when we used Gauss's law to find the electric field inside of a sphere and uh, outside of a sphere? And if the sphere is uh, insulating, we also used Gauss's law. Okay. Uh, so the same, the same re for the same reason, if I want to find the potential here, instead of integrating over the whole thing to find the potential, I could use the electric field that we already got from before to find the, the potential at that point. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go to the sphere. Okay, let's start for a minute with the conducting sphere. What was the electric field at a certain distance r? What was the formula that we got? This was, I think, chapter 24. <clears throat> we used Gauss's law to find the electric field of a conducting sphere outside of the sphere and inside of the sphere. Yeah, outside of the spheres, it looks like a point charge. And then inside of the sphere, if it's conducting, was what? Zero, right? For conducting sphere, all of the charge moves to the outside. There's no charge in the, in, in the center. Nowhere in the center is there any charge. Okay, so the electric field is zero. For insulating sphere, it's a different thing. Okay, so if I want to find the potential at any point here, if I want to find the potential at any point, I can integrate, uh, for example, I can integrate um, from infinity, from infinity to that point, and I can calculate the potential at that point. But I'm not going to do it because I've already done it in the beginning of chapter 25. Remember, I took a point charge, and I saw for the potential at any point, I got kq over r, kq over d. So that one I don't have to redo. And therefore, I know that the, that the potential at the center, you know what, let me use a, a d here, kq over d, k 
kk over d. Therefore, I know that the potential at the center is what? At the, I mean, at the surface. I know it's kq over r, where r is the radius of the circle. So let's say I want to now go inside of the uh, sphere and ask the question, what is the potential at any point inside of the sphere? Then I will use uh, the integral here. I would go v, and this is going to be my little r, OK? v of little r minus v of big R. So here's the, the way we're going to do it. In order to find the potential at any point inside of an object, we're going to integrate from the surface of that object to the inside. And since we know the electric field in that region from Gauss's law, we can use that electric field. So V sub R minus V sub big R is equal to the negative integral from uh, um, you see, v2 minus v1, so minus 1 is going to be the same as that. So it's going to be uh, r to little r electric field times dr. Actually, it's a little easier to do it this way. Uh, since the electric field is usually pointing outward, right? it's easier to integrate from little r to big r. Uh, so let's do it this way. Little r to big r, and then switch these two. There you have. So in other words, whatever symbol is here has to be there from the definition. Then whatever symbol is here has to be there. So if I want to integrate a v sub big r at the surface, minus v sub little r at any point. I integrate from little r to big r, which is better because I'm integrating from here to here. And since the electric field is out, the dot product will be equal to 1. The cosine of the angle of 0 is going to be 1, right? So now, what is the electric field? In this case, it's going to be 0 because the electric field anywhere inside the conducting sphere is 0. So what that's going to mean is that the potential at any point inside of a conducting sphere is equal to the same potential at the surface of the conducting sphere. Okay? So the potential graph will look like this for a conducting sphere. It's going to be constant until you get to big R. And after that, it's going to decrease as a function of 1 over uh, d linearly. So the potential inside of a, a, a conducting sphere is equal to whatever the, at the center. This goes back to the statement that I made. I said, if you're inside of a car and it gets hit by a lightning, and let's say the whole car is now at 10,000 volts. Oh my god, Ugh. dangerous, right? No. Because the electric field inside of the car is going to be what? Zero. The other way to say it is all points inside of the car are also going to be at 10,000 volts. So even you're going to be at 10,000 volts. But since there's no difference between the different parts of your body, you're safe. All points inside of a conducting sphere are at the same potential. You see? OK, now let's go to the insulating sphere.